Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be doing a quick build of the Lady Owl. Now if you are a subscriber to the channel you may have seen my in-depth build of the Mini Owl. This one's going to be a lot quicker. I'm going to cut it just to the main parts and it's going to go through pretty fast. Also this is a more simplistic build. We have the FX 7970 camera bolted at the front there and there's just a regulator under there powering it and also a beeper rather than an on-screen display. So if you want the more in-depth build then check out the Mini Owl. However this is going to be a really quick build and I'm also going to show how to change the motor direction with BL Heli and also the setup in Beta Flight. So let's get to it. So starting off with the motors and all four screws are going to go in unlike the Mini which only took two screws in the motors and all of those have gone in so now I am putting the battery strap in and now the standoffs are going in I'm tightening the nut right up to the edge of the frame you do that for all of them so the ESC board can fit over the top I'm arranging all the wires so that they are in the right place for soldering and the next thing I'm going to do is clip the motor wires a bit shorter ready for soldering then I'm going to tin up the ESC board and start soldering in the motors. So I'm going to start off with motor one here. Each motor has three wires going into the board. It doesn't matter which order they go in. Just pay attention to which motor is which. So that was motor one. This is motor four. Again, I'm going to be changing the direction of the motors in BL Heli. So it doesn't matter which order they go in. And this is motor 2. You can pause the screen if you are following along to make sure the motors are going into the right solder pad. And that's those three there. And then we have motor 3. Again, three wires going in. Next is the positive wire to the JST connector. This is going to power up the ESC board and then the negative wire and then the VBAT wire is going to tell the flight controller what the voltage is for telemetry and then this is for powering the flight controller's regulator and we need to do the same for the negative so three wires there so onto the flight controller and I'm soldering in the PWM wire pay attention to the order I've also had to remove the black and red positive and negative wire and flip them around so they're in the right order this is the RX for the DSM satellite. This is the negative wire and this is the 3 volt positive wire. And I'm using sticky back tape to plug that in. So these are the two pins that are going to hold the regulator in to power the board. It's a 5 volt regulator and I have soldered that up and I am clipping the top off them there. And then this is the PWM wire into the ESC board. And now this is the VBAT to tell the flight controller what the voltage is, which will send it to the beeper later. And that's the negative wire of the VBAT getting soldered in as well. And then this is the power connector for powering the flight controller, positive and negative. So that's pretty much it for the main build. I have added these standoffs here as well as the hex screws underneath and I have added the FPV gear. It was really simple. I did have to use another 5 volt regulator. This is the one from fpvhobby.com and I have linked that to the power here going into this other regulator. If you connect the FPV camera direct to this 5 volt regulator then there's not enough power to power up the flight controller so you do need another regulator and I have got this coming out here to one of the FX797T cameras I desoldered the antenna and use a load of hot glue so the antenna can sit on this side I also added a 5 volt beeper here underneath and I have added the props as well, just use two screws here. And I have added a different Lemon RX. I was having problems with the one that I decased, so I'm using this one. The last thing to do is to put the top on, and then we need to change the motor direction in BL Heli so that everything is running in the right direction.
So here we are in BL Halley Suite. It is a ESC tool, which if you have BL Halley flashed to your ESCs, then you can change various settings. Of course, all I'm interested in really is changing the motor direction so the motors go the correct direction on the Typhoon board. So the Typhoon is flashed with BL Halley Suite. So what you need to do first of all is download this application. I'll put a link in the description. Second of all, you need to plug the quadcopter into the computer via its USB port. I have done that and it's coming up as COM3. Now when you first install this, it will ask you for a interface source and you need to select clean flight because you can plug it in in various different other ways as well. But we are using the clean flight pass through, which basically means that it's going to route through clean flight to access the ESC settings. So I've got my quadcopter plugged in to the computer here and you can see there it says COM3 so I can press connect. Now it's a bit of a clunky program BL Halley and I think they have updated it since this is an older version but what you have to do is you need to plug your quadcopter in via its battery first of all so I'm going to do that just plug the battery in here Okay, so only one beep from the ESCs there. And then you've got this check button here. So you have to press that. And what it'll do is it'll show you all of the different firmwares that are loaded on each ESC. And you can see here on a couple of them, it says not in sync with master. Now, we know ESCs that are out of sync is not a good thing. However, it doesn't mean that. It means that each one of the settings on the individual ESCs are not the same and that is just because on two of them I have had to reverse them. In fact it even says they're like reversed, reversed and both of those say not in sync. So if we press OK there I will show you how to change the direction. So this is motor 1, 2, 3 and 4 at the bottom and that is in the clean flight configuration. So it's motor 1 at the bottom right and then motor 2 at the top right motor 3 at the bottom left and motor 4 at the top left. Now something that this software does, it's pretty confusing, it selects all of the ESCs so all of the changes that you make happen to all of the ESCs so what you have to do is unselect the other ones. So now you can see there we are just viewing ESC1 even though this is an all-in-one ESC board the ESCs are classed as individual ESCs. So now what we can do is we can change the motor direction if we need to. Now I've already done that for this particular quadcopter so you can see that the motor direction is normal. So if I untick that and tick that one we're now on ESC2. You have to untick it otherwise both of them are selected there you can see. So you need to untick that and now we've got ESC2 and that is reversed. You literally just tick this arrow here to change it and then if I untick that and tick number three, you can see that that one is reversed too. And untick that and tick that and number four is normal. So if you have made any changes, you just press right setup there and it will write the new settings to the ESCs that have changed. Once you have done that, you can check the direction, make sure that you have the props off the quadcopter, of course, but that is it, it is pretty simple. So I have flashed beta flight to this board already, but to do that, you just go into the firmware flasher and select SP Racing F3, which is this one. And then I'm choosing version three, which is the latest. Make sure you have the manual board rate set to two, five, six, and then load firmware online and then flash the firmware. But of course I have already done that. So it says that it's connected to COM3 there. So I'm gonna to connect to it at this point you want to calibrate your accelerometer and if we go into ports there I've got the serial RX on the UART3 this is for the DSMX satellite into configuration here and we've got quad X setup we've got one shot 125 I've got motor stop turned off and we've got the minimum throttle at quite low there and the maximum throttle at 2000 of course so we've got RX serial selected for the spectrum satellite and 1024 selected here for DSM X and then I've got the VBAT enabled as well so that my voltage buzzer goes off got the voltage scale at normal there and 
I have got the voltage warning at three, which is a little bit low actually. That should be it should be three point five for this one. And the minimum cell voltage should be three point three, so I'll change that now. And that is pretty much it. I've got the gyro update frequency both at two kilohertz for the PID loop frequency as well. And that is pretty much everything there. I'm gonna save that. Save and reboot. It says rebooting at the top now, it's ready. Oh, something that you are going to want to do, which I didn't mention, is you need to change the yaw to 45 degrees in the configuration that I've mounted this board. Or if you've done any different orientation, you can mess about with it here. Basically, just mess about with it until in the setup, the quad faces the right way when you lift it up off the ground. So into the PID tuning. And these are my PIDs that I use for this particular build. It's pretty nice. And I've got Super Expo rates switched on there. I think this is version 2.91 actually. I need to update it to version 3 because they have changed the way that Super Expo rates work. So into receiver and this is using TAER1234 modes. I have got arming on a switch. I've got angle horizon and also acro mode on a three position switch. I've got air mode switched on here and I've also got a beeper to go off. So it's like a lost model beeper making full use of that buzzer that I installed. And if you tick enable expert mode you can mess around with the fail safe as well. But that's my pretty stock settings that I use for beta flight these days. So there you go, that is my build video of the Flex RC Lady Owl. I'll put a link in the description if you wish to buy this kit and follow it along. And I also hope you enjoyed this different style of build video where I just get to the main points but it's less detailed. For those of you who want a more detailed build video of this type of thing, check out the mini owl build. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers. Feel paralyzed